Why preaching? Three truths that I'm going to give you from the Bible. Three truths about why we preach. The first verse that I'm going to give you is from 2 Timothy 4. Just four. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. It's actually a famous verse. <laughs> Be careful with that Bible. Man. Okay, so this is what the verse says. It says, okay, and before I read this, this is Paul. Okay, the author is Paul, and he's talking to Timothy. Timothy is like his protege. It's like his student, um, his, his intern kind of, okay, um, Paul's talking to him. He says, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Preach the word. So it's very clear that Paul is instructing Timothy to preach. Now, I told you that Timothy is like an intern, right? So Timothy is going to be the pastor of, of, of a church, and Paul is telling him, hey, it's important for you as a pastor, as a leader, is that you preach. Now, this word preach, it means to herald, okay? That's what it actually means. Heralding is what you think of when you think of, like, like old days when there was, like, a kingdom and there was a king and he would send a guy, like, a, somebody to, like, cry out in the square and he would say, hear ye, hear ye, this is the message from the king. That's what heralding is. You're, you're proclaiming a message. And so what Paul is telling Timothy to do, he's telling him, hey, you are a messenger of God, right? It says right here, in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead. You're a messenger of this great God, and you need to herald the message. What's the message that he's supposed to say? It's the good news. It's the gospel of Jesus. You need to go tell the church that there is good news, and you need to constantly be reminding them of this. Now, of course, the good news consists of the gospel of Jesus, right? His life, his death, and his resurrection, that he's the son of God. But the good news also encompasses the entire biblical story. It encompasses Genesis through Revelation, the fact that God is the creator. He made Adam and Eve, and then there was Noah, and there was Moses, that whole entire thing. Paul is expecting Timothy, hey, you've got to tell these people the entire story, the entire message of who God is and what he wants and what the good news is. And so that's what he's saying, really, when he says preach. He's saying herald, and it's a priority for the church. That's why we preach at church. It's because the good news needs to be heralded. It needs to be proclaimed. It needs to be shared so that everybody can hear it. Now, you're asking, okay, well, Aaron, yes, like you can do that. Do we really need to do that every week? And why can't we just do that in Sunday school? And those are good questions. Let me try to tell you some other verses that can answer that, okay? The next verse I want you to turn to is Ephesians, okay? Ephesians chapter 4, 11 through 12. Okay. Ephesians chapter 4. So this is going to give us another angle on preaching. It says, And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. So there's a lot in that verse, but there's one, maybe like two things I want to highlight, okay? The first thing I want to highlight is that it says that God has given shepherds and teachers work to do. Shepherds and teachers, okay? So when we talk about shepherds and teachers, we're talking about pastors. We're talking about people who are able to understand the Bible and they're able to explain it and they're able to teach other people. God is saying, or Paul is saying here, that God has given these type of people, shepherds and teachers, to the church. And so there is a ministry specifically that these shepherds and teachers need to do. And that work is what? It's equipping the saints. It's to equip to equip. That word equip, it means to like build up, right? It means to strengthen. It means to prepare them. And so if you think of the context of what we do in youth worship, you have a pastor or you have a preacher who's getting up there and he's supposed to 
teach you God's word so you can do the work of ministry, so you can go into your life and you can minister to others. So while preaching is good for you to know and to just be reminded of the gospel, it's also to equip you so that when you go into your schools or when you go back into your home, you can minister to other people and you're able to build up the body of Christ. And so shepherds and teachers, they're supposed to help equip you to do your work, and they're supposed to just build up Christ's body. Now, it's important that you take notice that when we teach and when we preach, it's not like man's knowledge, okay? That's very important. I'm not supposed to go up on the pulpit and just tell you what I think, is important or i'm supposed to tell you what i think god wants me to say no god has given us his word and so the tool that preachers and teachers use to equip and to build up is the bible that's why we preach and teach it's it's to be god's word it's not a sharing time it's not like supposed to be a testimony time although those things are good The main work of the pastor, the preacher, the teacher is to explain and teach and help you apply God's word to your life. That's what shepherds are doing. That's what teachers are doing. It's not man's knowledge. It's not my opinion. It's what God says we're supposed to do. I have one more Bible verse for you, okay? One more Bible verse. 1 Timothy chapter 3. 1 Timothy chapter 3. And this is the... This is the last one that I want us to turn to for now. I guess I have one more verse at the very end, but this is for this section. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2. And this, this verse is going to kind of clarify a little bit about the pastoring, okay, or about the shepherding, about the preaching. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2. It says, Therefore, an overseer, and we're talking about an overseer of the church, okay, an overseer of the church must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, and then listen to this, able to teach. Able to teach. Okay, so these are qualifications of church leaders. And there's a lot of character things, right? But the one thing, the one skill that a pastor, a preacher, a teacher needs to have is that they are able to teach and you need to say well why why is that so important of a church leader and the answer is because that's what god expects the church leader to do god expects the church leader the pastor the teacher to get up there or to get in the classroom and teach god's word to explain if you are not able to do that unfortunately you're not qualified to be an elder an overseer of the church and that's that's normal right that that's 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 pretty much the consensus of all Christians in the, in the world. Um, primary responsibility of pastors is to preach. Pastors do a lot of other things than just teaching and preaching and 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 explaining God's word. It's true, right? It's true. But but at a minimum, they they need to have these character qualities, and at a minimum, they need to be able to explain God's word. Because if you're not able to explain God's word, how is a pastor supposed to tell you? This is what God says you need to be doing. This is what God says you need to live your life. This is this is how Jesus is going to help you and save you. If a pastor can't explain to you that by teaching the word of God, the pastor can't really help you on that level. God's word is the standard. And the Bible is the tool that pastors and teachers use to show us what God wants and expects of our lives.